Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. You know, I've been thinking this new Toyota Tacoma, the 2024, is going to destroy a lot of the mods or the modding possibilities that you can do with a Toyota Tacoma. And I think that's, at least for me, one of the biggest draws of the Toyota Tacoma anyway. Now, what I'm talking about, first of all, we're going to have a four-cylinder turbo. Now, with the turbo, there isn't going to be any more aftermarket cold air intake possibility. You know, it's one of the things that I love to do to the truck because you pop the hood, you can look underneath there, see that gorgeous cold air intake, you can modify it different ways. We're not going to have that with the new Tacoma. It's one of the things that I noticed when I went and looked at the new Tundra when it first came out. You know, it, it had the turbos on each side, but there's no cold air intake to mess with, of course, because it's not naturally aspirated. It's a turbo. That's kind of a drag, but there are other things that you're not going to be able to do or probably shouldn't do. Um, the exhaust, you know, first of all, it's going to be a four cylinder engine. It's bad enough to try to put some sort of an exhaust on a six cylinder because you just don't get that throaty sound that you get as you would with a V8, right? But imagine with a four cylinder, it's even worse. All you're going to have is some kind of tinny sounding canny kind of noise that you'd be getting. I'm not even sure that with the pressures and things that are created through the whole exhaust system with the turbos, the new setup, that you should even change out the exhaust system. You might start to affect performance in a negative way. And I've never experienced any performance gains with exhaust anyway, so probably not something that you should tackle or add to the new 2024 Tacoma. Next, wheels and tires. You know, something that I always like to change, but when we start to get into a, a smaller engine, you start to wonder about hauling around all that extra weight, right? I mean, if you put a bigger tire on, you're gonna be adding weight to the truck. Now you've gotta pull all that weight around with you. I don't know, you know, the engine is supposed to have a pretty decent amount of horsepower, 365, I think, and then 400 and some pound feet of torque. So maybe it's irrelevant, maybe it won't matter. The truck will still have enough oomph that it won't care if you add something heavier to it. Yeah, kind of hard to say. Another thing that I've noticed in the interior, it has the new infotainment system, the big screen. I think it's a 14-inch a screen, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the way that Toyota has chosen to do this is to slap in an iPad-looking-like screen that protrudes up above the dash. In my truck, I have the regular screen. This is the third gen, right? And then we have that trim piece that just pulls off. You can just grab a hold of it and pull it right off. Now, there's a ledge behind that screen where you can put a bracket that you can then attach phone holders to. I have a couple in here. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos. I use a magnetic setup where the holder is magnetic and then there's just a metal plate double side tape to the back of the phone case. And I just slap my phone up there. That's what we're using right now for this video. It's very handy and convenient. And not even if you're, using it for YouTube purposes or shooting video, but just a, a place to slap the phone up there if you wanna use the map, or maybe you wanna have it handy so you can punch through the music, or who knows, just to be able to have it up in front of you. Not gonna be able to do that, I don't think, with the new Tacoma, because that screen is gonna be up there in the way. And if by chance, there still is some sort of a way to connect it behind that screen, you're now going to have your phone sitting up in the air above the screen and starting to block your field of view. I mean, the screen itself seems like it kind of comes up a little bit where it is in your front view. Not enough, I don't think, to cause a problem, but nonetheless, it's still there. So that's something I think you can practically do, and that means we're right back to square one. What do you do with your phone? And you know, it's interesting to me, given everybody has phones these days, that the manufacturers aren't building in some sort of a convenient, safe phone holder. 
And maybe that's part of the problem. I suppose if they put something in the truck, sooner or later, somebody would have an accident and then they would claim that it's because they were looking at the phone that the manufacturer gave them the ability to look at and it's somehow the manufacturer's fault. That's probably why they don't do it. But man, it sure would be nice if dashes came with some sort of an integrated phone holder to be able to sit your phone in while you're driving around. And I know some of them do have a lower area, but let's face it, you shouldn't be looking down when you're driving your truck anyway. So that to me is even worse, who knows. The next thing and the last thing really is just adding weight to the truck. Again, it has that four cylinder engine and I don't know how it's gonna respond. Are you gonna lose a ton of power when you weight down the truck? And if you add a lot of mods to it, like bigger wheels and tires, like a, even a, a bed mat in the back, you know, those things are relatively heavy, added with everything else. Maybe a sport bar, those that like roof racks or tents or things like that. I mean, tents that you sleep in, not window tents. Uh, you're gonna add potentially a lot of weight to the truck and I just wonder if that's gonna rob it of power, if it's gonna make it feel sluggish. Hopefully not, but it's hard to say. The last thing, I guess there is one more thing, and that's fuel economy. You know, something that I really don't think you should worry a whole lot about in a truck. I mean, it is a truck anyway, but honestly, you wanna get the, the most miles you can get for what you put in that tank, right? Once you add weight and other things to that truck, is it going to cut back on the fuel economy? I mean, if you add all those things that I mentioned, all that extra weight, you're gonna be hauling all that extra stuff around all the time, right? All that extra weight. And is that engine going to be robust enough to be able to handle all of that without negatively affecting the performance or fuel economy of the truck? It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be interesting, but it's hard to say whether or not any of those things will matter, particularly until the truck is actually out there in the market and we can see. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels, Mod Driven, all about the Honda Civic, and Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button here too. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there. Bye.